Now that we've learned how to do functional group stretching for the right lateral flexors, left lateral flexors, flexors, extensors and back, right rotators and left rotators, we can combine these functional group stretches and we can look at the neck as having quadrants. The back right quadrant is made up of musculature that does extension and right lateral flexion. The left back quadrant is made up of muscles that do extension and left lateral flexion. The front right quadrant is made up of muscles that do flexion and right lateral flexion. And the front left quadrant, these muscles do flexion and left lateral flexion. If I want to stretch the muscles of the back right quadrant, these are muscles that do extension and right lateral flexion, then I would need to do the opposite of these two joint actions. Because these muscles are extensors, I bring the client's head and neck up into flexion. Right now, this stretches all of the extensors in both of the back quadrants. If I then bring the client over toward left lateral flexion, I might slacken the back left quadrant muscles, but I'll increase the stretch to the back right quadrant. Because these muscles being extensors and right lateral flexors are maximally stretched because the client's in flexion and left lateral flexion. As I bring the client's head and neck up to the left, I want to make sure that my elbow is against my core so that it's supported by my core body weight. I also need to think about stabilizing the right shoulder girdle of the client. If I were just left laterally flexing, her shoulder girdle would elevate and I would need to stop that by being on the superior surface. If I were only flexing her, her shoulder girdle would tend to move upward toward the ceiling and I would need to stabilize it by being on the anterior surface. In this case, because I'm both left laterally flexing her and flexing her, the shoulder girdle will tend to both elevate and lift up toward the ceiling. Therefore, I am going to have to stabilize that by being not just on the superior surface, not just on the anterior surface, but a diagonal across to stop both elevation as well as upward motion, rotation toward the opposite side. I can easily do that by using my forearm and coming down at a diagonal not just horizontal anteriorly, not vertical there, but a diagonal here. When I do this, I want to try and use the fleshy part of my forearm, and I want to make sure that I do not press too hard right in here, because the brachial plexus of nerves and subclavian artery travel through here. I also want to make sure I don't press too hard onto the bony structures. Using a cushion, like this, a piece of foam, is a very nice way to stabilize the area and have it be effective but also comfortable for the client. Now I can lean in with my body weight and stretch her up to the left.